In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. God is our, soul. our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, please be seated. Let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, I assign the penance that for the next three nights you would take the bulletin with you, and before retiring, Read the first three readings as prescribed by the church. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice Show us your mercy, Lord. And your answer to salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our God come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. But when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us in the battle of the river and renewed by the Holy Spirit, whom he graciously poured out upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, the Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the no 
Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Holy Trinity, triune God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Turn our wanderings into a pilgrimage, drawing us ever closer to who you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living and reigning as one God, forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Praised are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. When he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. 
Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Today is the solemnity of the Holy Trinity. One God in three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As children, even before we go to that first day of catechism. Our moms and our dads began to teach us of the religion, of the faith that we were all baptized in. How do we start prayer? It is making the sign of the cross. We say in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It also reminds us of the cross, which is a symbol of our salvation, and of the wounds that our Lord, blessed Lord endured, the crown of thorns, the nails in his feet, the nails in his hands, and the piercing of his heart. In Catechism for First Holy Communion, the instruction is very simple. What is the Holy Trinity? One God in three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Are the three equal to one another? And the answer that we read and later on that we have in the catechism preparing for confirmation is yes they are all equal throughout the centuries of the christian church there has been debate upon the relationship of father son and holy spirit this is a part of our catechetical instruction the closest to try to understand what the holy spirit is like the example that has been used is water. When water is frozen, it is ice. Water in its natural state is a liquid. And that if you boil water, it becomes a gas or steam. The same substance, just three different manifestations. Some of the early church fathers started to give definition of what the Holy Trinity was because in the early church there were many divisions there are many different interpretations and it did not cause a unity in the church but rather several divisions and so there was a need for the successors of the apostles to come together in one body and decide what was the relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? One of the early church fathers, Clement of Rome, said, Do we not have one God and one Christ and one gracious Spirit that has been poured forth upon us and one calling in Christ? Along with others such as Ignatius of Antioch 
and Justin Martyr, the early church fathers, all spoke of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as being one. At the Council of Nicaea, the first council, they gave a formulation of beliefs, what we call the creed. The first creed, even before the Nicene Creed, was the Apostles' Creed. It is this creed that is recited as we are brought into church to the baptismal font. It is the same Apostles' Creed that we who become confirmants of the sacrament of confirmation recite. Whereas an infant, we have godparents who recite it. And as a young adult, we witness. And in the Apostles' Creed, all that is said is, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, that did not really work in the early church because there were many different forms of interpretation. And so there were seven church councils, ecumenical church councils of the undivided church. In 1054 AD, there was the first separation of the faith. We call it the Great Schism. The church was torn into two. A Western Rite, which we know as Rome, the seat, and the Eastern Rite, which was based in Constantinople. The interesting thing is that it was Emperor Constantine II who was in Constantinople that had what is known as the decree or the edict of Milan which stopped the persecution of the Christians. And so it was in Nicaea in 325 that bishops, the successors of the apostles, came together and came up with what we recite on holy days and on Sundays, the Nicene Creed. One of the big separations was over a theological matter. It is what is known as the filioque. In the original creed, it said, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. Everything coming from the Father. But in the 6th century, the Roman Catholic Church says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And again, this term is known as the filioque. Well, in the Eastern Rite, they kept the original creed. That the Holy Spirit did not proceed from the Father and the Son, but merely from the Father. And in the Polish National Catholic Church, we, who are of the Catholic tradition, our liturgy, our sacraments, are all of the Western Rite. But when it comes to declaring the Holy Spirit, we keep the line of the Orthodox. And I tell people when we have, when I have the opportunity of talking to people about our church, one of the things that I've said is one of the big differences of our church is that we have tried to go back to the early Christian church as it existed before the Great Schism. You know, the first sacrament that we receive is the sacrament of baptism. And the formulation of this sacrament is based upon what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew where he says therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. These words are spoken as water is poured. That is the word, and the water is the form. There are some who do not hold to the same concept of the Holy Trinity. Among them, the Christian scientists, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Unitarians, and the United Church of God. And so why is this important? It is basically because God presents himself to us. In the Old Testament, we read that no one has ever seen God, but yet Jesus, at the Last Supper, when Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father and we'll believe him, what does Jesus say? Have I been with, with you all this time, and yet you do not know me, Philip? For I say unto you, whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. We know that Jesus had a very short earthly ministry, only three years. And it was at the Last Supper when we read from the Gospel of John that Jesus expounds upon the Holy Spirit, the one who was to come after him. He was to be our teacher, our guide, our helper, our advocate. Even though we gather at the table of the Lord and we receive the Blessed Sacrament as a memorial, but yet we call it a mystery, a memorial and a remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who gives us his bread, the bread which is his body and the wine which is his blood. That the story of our salvation did not end upon the cross, but rather what took place 40 days after the resurrection, our blessed Lord ascended into heaven, of where he talks about the need to stay in Jerusalem, to wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and that 10 days after that ascension, we read, that suddenly there came a strong wind and it filled the whole house where they were seated. Well, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Trinity, we celebrate the path unto God through Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The great
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that be with all of you. Please be seated. that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. substance, we ask you to make them holy. Grant us an understanding of your inner life, for to that living mystery we have been called. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. It is at this time that you sent the Holy Spirit upon the apostles to establish your whole church, completing the Paschal mystery and revealing your divine plan of salvation in Christ Jesus. As we gather today on the solemnity of the Holy Trinity, we recall one God in three divine for her sons. And with the Holy Trinity, we bring ourselves to your service. And so 
We he joined this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating, on sea he singing we. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. On this day, let our prayers be offered for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those suffering from the coronavirus, and pray for not only their health, but the wellness of their families. Let us give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders and all health care workers. In our most deepest prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let our prayers be offered and ask that Almighty God watch over all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad and that they return safely back into their families. And let us also pray for all here present, our friends and family, whose faith and devotion are known to you, O Lord, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also the blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. all moments so sacred for the whole human family. Our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you.
In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that's what your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. <laughs> to these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment to light and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not blaming our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following the fine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same 
Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, the Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us. Living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May I at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist this day, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. <coughs>
they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Lord, what we have received unto us, may we have received my prayer. And may the simple come to us in everlasting kingdom. so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh and dwelt, made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, shall be, for all the Amen. And for the repose of, of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 